Today on the inaugural episode of the House of Hammer, we are talking The Walking Dead, Green Arrow, and The Sons of Anarchy up to this point. And since the only reason people watch YouTube videos is for hot chicks, here you go, you bastards. to the inaugural episode of the House of Hammer. I am the Bill Dozer. I'm Seth Manhammer. And we do pop culture reviews, commentary. Uh, we're going to talk everything from movies, TVs, comic books. Now, what we basically did is we've seen all these other YouTube videos do something like this. Yes. And we just really thought that maybe we could do it and maybe even do it a little bit better. And we may surprise you folks a little bit. So make sure you stay tuned in here. So what's on the agenda first? Well, first, we are going to talk about The Walking Dead. The new season of The Walking Dead started this past week, and boy, how was it a snoozer? <laughs> I didn't think it was a snoozer. I thought it was setting up. I thought it was setting up the season because, well, you know, consider. I see your point. Considering that the season three finale was, yeah, yeah, ended us with a snore, brought us back in with a snore. They're still napping. Rick's wandering around by himself again, find some crazy lady. I'm pretty sure he's already done that before. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but it all runs together since it seems like it's the same show. I really think that they set up that now maybe the virus that causes them to turn into The Walking Dead or the Walkers is now airborne. Because the pig scene at the end and then the kid dying in the shower, a little fucking Harry Potter wannabe, that is the only interesting thing, besides the airborne zombies. Those were kind of cool. Uh, the kid dying in the shower, it's like, okay, you got a kid dying in the shower, people who sleep in the prison. Like, what's going to happen? But it, since it's The Walking Dead, it'll probably pick back up three weeks later, and they'll just talk, boy, that was a bad situation where that kid dying in the shower and turned into a walker. <laughs> That's my prediction. The zombies coming through the roof, the airborne. Yeah, y'all didn't know that the zombies had, uh, The Walking Dead had a... Uh, uh, airborne Ranger because they did you. That was that, that, <laughs> that was, was actually cool. kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I tell you what, Carl seems to have come around. Carl has also gotten a lot taller and grown up as a kid. And grown a lot more hair. Like I don't know anything about that. And but, Herschel's daughter, by the way, totally like 28 years old. It's okay to lost that to her. Yeah, I thought I was a perv, and then we looked it up and saw she was 28. Yeah. It's all good. We went into our respective rooms and masturbated. Next up, we are talking about a show that is really taking a lot of people by surprise and is off of our, one of our favorite comic book characters, Arrow. Yes, we love us some Green Arrow. I don't love him, but I'd like to think I'm a big fan. We'll go with that. He's also a really big fan because Deathstroke's in it. So, uh, the season premiere, and I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool too. There were some parts that it seemed like it got away from the hard, gritty first season and went into the fanciful land a little bit, like with the arrow shooting up and him repelling off of it. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a hokey entrance, I thought. But that being my biggest complaint about the episode, I, I is this the season where he made the at maybe at the end of the season the cliffhanger he announces he's running for mayor? That would be cool. Yeah, that would be really cool because they're going a lot towards the com or they're going they're taking the comic mythology of the Green Arrow and working it and tweaking it to a television scenario. They really seem to me to be going a little bit more towards the comics because in the first season there was a lot of death, there was a lot of killing. And uh, Merlin, who's one of my favorite Q-list villains, <laughs> he, he is. I like Merlin. I always thought he was a cool little villain. But they killed him off already. So I just, I, I think they're like, well, maybe this was a little too much. Let's get back to the Green Arrow, who vehemently opposes and taking life. Right. However, the Green Arrow comic book series, in the mid-80s, you had the Longbow Hunters, written by Mike Grell, which started the hard, dark, gritty mm -hmm. crime comic that the Green Arrow was for the longest time. Right. And then you had Kevin Smith's reboot in the mid-90s, if I recall. 
wasn't really a reboot, but it brought Green Arrow back to life, and then it was more along the lines of the mainstream DC universe, which it seems like if the first season was the Mike Grell season, this season would be like the Kevin Smith, Brad uh, Melter, Judd Winnick run so far. And some of the characters that are teased in the first episode, I am ecstatic about. Central City, The Flash, Zoom Zoom. Now, I don't know 100% if that was Black Canary at the end. Oh, sorry to interrupt you. That okay. was Black Canary. But Roy Harper, that was badass. Yes. Now, in the comic books, of course, everybody knows that Roy Harper is... Arsenal. Is Arsenal. Uh, but Roy Harper in this one is really street-level thug vigilante trying to be Batman without the gadgets. Right. Basically, in other words, Moon Knight. Except cool. So at the end of the episode, I was like, is this Black Canary? Because when I saw her, it looked like she was a woman of Asian descent. Okay, I found out, I did some reading online. I can read. I did some reading online. That is Black Canary, not played by the girl that plays Laura Lance. Okay. So, how that's going to work, which is really strange for a show like Arrow, because they've been pretty comic accurate with the names and occupations and whatnot. One thing that excited me too, I'm hoping... Here's the part that I do not get, folks. He is obsessed with this Jason Blood uh, gargoyle character. It's demon. not a gargoyle. Demon. It's the Demon Etrigan. Okay, Demon Etrigan looks exactly like the gargoyle from the Defenders Marvel comic to me. But Mar okay, Marvel probably ripped it off because Jack Kirby created the Demon and Jack Kirby was ripped off by Marvel to no end. All right. I, I can't argue that. But the vote for blood scene, I'm really hoping it's Jason Blood. Uh, I'm hoping that they may bring some of the supernatural elements into the DC Arrow show. Well, okay, and then also too, <laughs> if we're on this subject of Arrow and the Warner or the DC live action universe, I should say, uh, Gotham Central, the TV show. I don't know if it's called Gotham Central or not. I could be wrong. Fanboys don't pinch me. Uh, about the early days of Commissioner Gordon mm -hmm. when he's a cop, that got greenlit. Uh, there's also talk of a Constantine TV series based off the comic book Hellblazer. Which the movie was so terrible. The movie was terrible, so you can only go up from there. Here's what I don't understand, DC. You have a great hit show like Arrow. It's probably the best TV show that not everybody is watching. It doesn't do numbers like SOA or Walking Dead or Game of Thrones. But it is a terrific, it's just a fantastic show, especially for any comic book nerd or anybody who's a geek or like that at all. But the problem I'm having is this TV show, I can probably name, there's probably maybe one episode that isn't as good as Man of Steel. I don't get it. A dog taking a shit in the courtyard is better than a Man of Steel. A hooker with AIDS-infected hypodermic needles coming out of her eyes is better than the Man of Steel. And that being said, while we're on the subject, Warner Brothers, I hope you're listening, because maybe someday you'll watch. I'm fairly convinced that you guys make good superhero movies on accident. <laughs> <laughs> like you try to fuck them up. On purpose, um, it seems. Yes, and Batman is the only one that you might have even come anywhere near making good. Mm -hmm. Which, Dark Knight, Dark Knight was a great movie. Dark Knight Rises was alright, we'll give you that one. Batman Begins was pretty fucking good. Yeah. Uh... DC Animation is where you should stick with Warner Brothers. Maybe we'll get lucky and Disney will buy DC too. We can all do that. That would be pretty cool. We are not one of those who are opposed to DC buying Star Wars. Disney buying Star Wars. Disney buying Star Wars. Who does DC buying Star Wars? First episode, folks, there's going to be some bumps in the road. Okay. Anyway, so Arrow uh, kicked off pretty well. I right. thought I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes, what other characters they bring in. You are really big on the Wally West. Of course, I'm a huge Deathstroke guy, so I'm looking to see more of him. Uh, we're both really looking forward. Uh oh. I forgot. Amanda Waller, Task Force X, Suicide Squad. Could be in here. So we're really both big on Arrow. We think the season kicked off wonderfully, and we're waiting to see new characters and all these character developments and everything like that. It's going to be some fantastic shit. Bill, what else we got on the table for tonight? All right. Here is the one that a lot of people, including myself, had some trouble with. The new season, season six, seven? Six. Six of uh, Sons of Anarchy has started, and we're about the fourth episode in. The first episode, I was half a heartbeat, a rat's nut hair away from swearing the show off, because this show 
the season premiere of Sons of Anarchy had a pretty graphic prison read for network television. Uh, drowning, drowning by piss, torture porn, in a school shooting. It's almost like they tried to take the uh, Red Wedding episode of Game of Thrones and magnify it by 200, and they did it in a very tasteless manner. Whenever he watched that episode, though, he did also go masturbate to that, too. But being such a loyal fan of the show and loving it as much as I did, I thought I would go ahead and give it a, you know, give it one more try. Kurt Sutter, what is wrong with you? You are jacked up in the head. Okay, that's first and foremost. Uh, I know you went on your show afterward and tried to defend all the stuff. You know what? Dude, kiss my ass. You oh, rapped. Yeah. His, 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 his internet show, it's basically the talking dead after Wood, uh, whatever, dude. But Kurt Sutter, what is wrong with you? I mean, first off, the crazy ass episode, the season premiere, all the stuff you put in there, I still don't care what you say, it was pretty wrong. The other problem that I have is during one of your After Wood shows, you took a pot shot at The Walking Dead. Have some class, man. Just shut up and write the good show. Now, on to the show. <laughs> I'm glad they brought the tranny that Boyd Crowder played back. <laughs> Was that not the coolest shit? Yes. Yes, the, tra yes. the tranny comes back, and he just has some of the best one-liners. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Absolutely digging it. Uh, I can't wait till Tig gets back to uh, uh, Diego. What, what, what's, what's the name of the whorehouse they run? Care Care. No, not Care Care. That's the porn company. Oh, uh, I'm terrible with names. Diosa. Diosa. The whorehouse's name is Diosa. I can't wait to see when Tig gets back and sees his little transtestacle boy toys. <laughs> See, see if Tig gets off again or whatever. But anyway, uh, it's st it's starting to pick up. I really love uh, Peter Weller in the role he's in in the show. RoboCop can not go wrong. Anymore. Yeah, and this one he plays a dirty cop, so I'm digging that. I really enjoy the season so far, but that first episode still disturbs me. So now the trick is we'll be keeping Bill Dozer here off of Facebook and Twitter while he's watching it so he doesn't spoil things like I will be dying for everyone I spoil everything I don't care if you don't like it watch the shows on time or don't follow me on Facebook and Twitter which is kind of hard to do since you live with them we're roommates now what we're going to do is, at the end of every episode, we are going to have a fantasy matchup. We want this to be your show. We want it to be as interactive as possible. So being the comic book nerds that we are, we're going to, or just being the nerds that we are, we're going to take ultimate matchups that we've never seen before, and in honor of Arrow's season premiere, which we both really dug, we've got Green Arrow taking on Sabretooth. For those of you who have been living under a rock for the last 30 years, don't know who Sabretooth is. He's like Wolverine, but with an anger management problem. Right. But Wolverine's got anger management issues. Yeah. Well, Sabretooth is the guy played by Tyler Mayne in the first X-Men movie, and then played by Lee Schreiber in X-Men Origins Wolverine, which some people saw and liked for some reason. I st that one we'll save for another topic, but uh, Sabretooth versus Green Arrow. Couple of B-listers. Yeah, that was, that was all a couple of B-listers going at it, you know, and we're going to give you our thoughts next week when we put out our new episode, and we'll tell you who we think wins that battle. Yeah. But in the meantime, comment below, make sure you tell us who you think and why, or just give us a vote, Sabretooth, or, you know, whoever, whatever, you know. And it may seem like we're just pulling Sabretooth out of the hat. We did discuss having Green Arrow versus Hawkeye. However, Bill had some very strong feelings on that. But that's one of the ultimate fantasy matchups that we all talk about. We've seen Green Arrow versus Hawkeye in a little bit in the crossovers. Like, did you specifically say? Oh, personally, I think Green Arrow would end up sucking Hawkeye's dildo arrow. But. That's one that everybody does and everybody's talked about. That one's been done True. to death. We wanted to come up with something a little different, so get you guys thinking a little and bit. Chef from Young Blood was a no contest. <laughs> so anyway, Green Arrow versus Sabretooth. That's a fancy matchup. 
make sure you tell us who you think will win that. Okay, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Passive Hammer. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, at Seth Manhammer. And follow me on Twitter, at Real Bill Dozer. Until next time, beware of Romulans bearing gifts. <laughs>